Greetings and salutations, hello everybody, it's Rorschach here, and I am going to review Jim Cornette reviewing Will Ospreay versus, let's see if I can pronounce this name correctly, can I say, I can't, <laughs> take a shitty, <laughs> no, I can't do it, I can't do it, anyway, you, you can see in the background there, Kenosuke Takeshiti. <laughs> Sorry, do if you're watching. No. I'm not Japanese, obviously. So this is a match from AEW Revolution 2024. An excellent card. I would say that there's um, two five-star matches on this card. And one of them was this, this one here. The other one was the one with Daniel Bryan versus um, Eddie Kingston. And the, the main event, Sting's Retirement Match, that was excellent as well. I'll give that a four star, but it was kind of like a wild um, arena wide brawl, wasn't it? Uh, but yeah, um, Jim Cornette then reviewing, let's go full screen here. Right, reviewing this match. I've got a problem with, with Jim Cornette, right? But I'm not sure what my problem is, so. Um, in reviewing his review of this excellent five-star match, maybe we can come to some sort of resolution, really, about what is going on with Jim Cornette. Why does he hate on AEW so much? A, a product which is bringing great joy to modern wrestling fans. And look at me. I'm, I'm not a young guy. <laughs> I, I, I grew up with Jim Cornette as the the heel manager of the Midnight Express with the, with the tennis racket. You know, my... First experience with pro wrestling was NWA, Rock and Roll Express versus the Russians, the, the Road Warriors, and yeah, Jim Cornette, he was always there, right? But maybe um, being worked again by Jim Cornette. It was working me back in the 1980s. Maybe he's still working me today. Maybe that's what's going on. But let's listen to what he's got to say here and see if any of this criticism of an excellent five-star match makes any sense okay weird image he's got here well speaking of leading people into sports entertainment we were led to believe in the next match by don Fallis, the leader of the Fallis family that it was going to be the greatest match of the decade between it was a good hype job i don't know if it's the greatest match of the decade but it's certainly one of the best matches i've seen in a long long time so Mr. Fallis of the Fallis family. Um, lower heel wasn't really lying. <laughs> this match was excellent. In Will Ostrich, and I'm back to calling him take now. I mean, they, they, they've got a bleep taker S H I T on YouTube now, though. YouTube is getting so censorious, isn't it? And Will Osprey, not that funny, really. Good boy, howdy. Did they all take yeah. a Will Osprey? No. Will, Will Ostrich, isn't it, Jim? Will Ostrich. Ha! Boom, a sense of humour. Right in the middle of the ring with it. So, they obviously, there was no reason for this match to happen. It was blurted out by Don... No, there, there is a reason for this match to, to happen, because Will Osprey, not Ostrich, will be turning babyface, won't he? He'll obviously go against the Fallis family later on. The story hasn't been completed yet, Jim. We're at the beginning of the story. He, sh he should know this. <laughs> On Phallus himself that, you know, I, I, we can't find any competition, so members of my family are going to face each other with the thought of having the greatest match of the decade, which, of course... Okay. So the reason putting these two people in a ring together is because they want to get Will Ospreay over as a massive baby face and the way you do that with modern wrestling fans who watch AEW is you put him in matches where he can show just how bloody talented he is so he's going to get massively over with the with the crowd exactly what happens during this match and then the fans are going to demand that he's a baby face they're going to cheer him like he's a baby face so then he's going to turn against the Don Fallis uh, family, right, Jim? Oh, come on, Jim. Jim, I, I know you vote Democrat, but you have got a brain in your head, right? You, you should be able to work this one out. This makes absolutely no sense why he would want this to happen, because why would the evil manager care about having the greatest match of anything or a good match or whatever when his guys would be fighting? It would create dissension and ill will in his group. He wouldn't want that because one of his guys has to lose. 
So this may... He wouldn't want that. Like, he wouldn't want um, his, his group to be putting on the best matches on the show. He's, he's, a, he's a heel. He's, he's a braggart. His, uh, his ego gets the, the best of him, like it does with all comic book films. It's always the ego, isn't it? Uh, that, that, that gets in the way of a of like a Lex Luthor type. So he's not thinking about that. He's, he's, he's a bad guy, Jim. He's, he's, he's a bad guy. He just wants to brag and show everyone that he's got the best wrestlers. Made no sense. And Brian, you and I... Does make sense. Looking deeper... Analyze this as well. They fucked up. They realized that they signed. Hang on, he can use the F word, but they bleep the the S word. I don't, I don't, I don't understand what's going on YouTube nowadays. Ostrich and put him in the heel group three months ago, and then let him come back. Look, they've they've also put a cadder in a in a heel group. You start someone off in a heel group. You put them in excellent matches. They turn baby face. This is what you do to new people coming into AEW. Start them off as heels, and yeah, they, and the, the the crowd will get to love them because they're so bloody talented in the ring gym. Back and finish, or go back and finish his New Japan commitments, and then come back. And now they realize they got no baby faces worth of shit. The people are ch yes, so they're building a new baby face. Osprey and Okada here in their heels. Because Daniel Bryan is retiring soon, and um, Kenny Omega is uh, a little bit banged up at the moment, isn't he? Baby face is out of the bill. Like, Eddie Kingston is probably my favourite baby face in AEW. Building. So, they're going to switch this. They're going to make Ostrich a baby face. Yes. And that's why he came out the other night slapping hands and shaking hands and smiling at the fans and giving the rah-rah speech and everybody cheering him, being happy. Yes, Jim. But then, take a shit was glaring at him, and you could smell something was going to happen. Okay, so they're going to, Ostrich is going to win, the heel mm -hmm. group is going to turn on him, and now yes. everybody's in the right place. Yes. You can swipe it, prime it, gloat or it. Oh my god, YouTube. Don't they have targeted adverts on YouTube? So we got a, a wrestling uh, uh, video. And you got a, a makeup video for girls. How many young girls are watching wrestling videos? Uh, and we got a, a computer game with a purple haired protagonist. Right, hang on. There's bloody adverts. I'm not paying for YouTube to have no adverts. As, as annoying as the adverts are, I'm not giving any money to bloody Google. Everybody's in the right place. Okay. Except that's not what they fucking did. What they did was nothing. Now they're building the story, Jim. This is exactly what they're doing. They had a match, mm -hmm. and it was over. No, and it's not. Nobody over. did shit. Oh my god, the story is going to last longer than a match. And they got a TV show. They got two big shows each week. They got Dynamite and Collision. Rampage isn't much of a big deal nowadays. No, they, they they're not going to do the story in one match. Um, it's going to be um, a bit slower than that, Jim. Have some patience. Your ostrich is going to turn babyface, just not as fast as you want him to. I assume that it was our boy Willie that was calling this thing, because he, between him and Take, he's the veteran. Yeah, probably. And he's the new big glorious signee that's going to be a game changer, so I'm assuming he's calling this thing. He sounds reluctant to give AEW any praise whatsoever, doesn't he? I think with Jim Cornette, it's just um, he, he sees things in very black and white terms, in in like binary my team versus your team terms. And that's the impression I get when he talks about politics. It's like everything that the Republicans do is terrible, and everything that the Democrats do is is great. There's no nuance there with Jim Cornette. It's just. This is my team, so they're great. The other team, everything they do sucks. And he takes this very um, binary um, worldview into the world of wrestling as well. So WWE, great. AEW, everything they do sucks. I mean, in reality, some, some of the times the Republicans make sense. Some of the times the Democrats make sense. Some of the times AEW is good. 
some of the times AEW is bad. Sometimes WWE is good. Sometimes it's bad. It's not all good or all bad. He's just um, it's a very close-minded way he's, he's got of looking at the world of politics and the world of wrestling as well. I watch AEW and WWE. And um, why wouldn't I? I'm a wrestling fan. Uh, sometimes WWE is better than AEW. Sometimes AEW is better. I mean, I find at the moment, in this particular um, you know, the t time period when I'm shooting this video now, I find that AEW's got a better in-ring product. But WWE, obviously with the Roman Reigns and Rock stuff, has got bigger stars and better storylines. So I, I, I enjoy both products. I don't poop YouTube on any product. I, I try to get the most enjoyment out of, out of both. And when it comes to politics as well, I try to look at, at, at both sides. It's not like, this is my side, so everything that the other side does is terrible. I'm not like that. I'm not as close-minded as Jim Cornette. That, that's his problem, isn't it? He's just, he sees things in terms of teams, and he's just very close-minded to what the other team is doing, even if the other team is doing something that's really, really good. Um, the other team, in, in politics, <laughs> Let's face it, the guy he's supporting is obviously past it, right? Uh, America not doing so great at the moment. You know, two massive conflicts going on. But he's not going to criticise his side, you know, even though when the orange bad man was in charge and there was no wars going on. <laughs> oh, my God. And when it comes to you know, wrestling, he, he's, he's the same. It's just, uh, no, I've got my side, and whatever they do, that's good. And whatever the other side does, that's terrible. And I'm going to um, call the best wrestler in the world right now an ostrich. It's, it's very immature as well, isn't it? How old is Jim Collier? In his 60s or 70s? He's just a very close-minded, immature, um, ignorant, as in ignoring you know, what the other side is doing. Um, way of looking at the world it's just yeah I, I, I don't know if he's playing a heel because he, he really is as close-minded as he comes across uh, on the always wrestling podcasts um may, maybe um the, the uh the transition from his generation being in charge to a, a new generation is a good thing i think we need more open-minded people in the world in in in, in politics and in pro wrestling, right? I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. Can't we just all get get along? Now, Jim does want everyone to get on. He wants everyone to fight. And if you go onto uh, Facebook and look at what wrestling fans are talking about, they, they're falling into the, the Jim Cornette binary boomer trap, really, where they're taking sides and just slagging off the other side. Guys, you don't have to take a side. You, you don't have to take any side. You've got your own mind, your own brain. You, you, you use it, you know. Yeah. Sometimes the Democrats are doing a good thing, right? They are. Sometimes they are. Sometimes in the UK, the Labour Party are doing good things. Sometimes the Conservatives are doing good things. You don't have to pick one side and just slavishly follow whatever they do, even though what they're doing might be terrible. Same with wrestling. Back to, back to this. He's been in Japan too long. They start out and they start wrestling. I love Japanese wrestling. And the fans start doing the fucking ole, 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 ole soccer chant deal for him because he's from England. Yeah, it, it's um, it's fans having a good time watching the wrestling, Jim. I don't think Jim is particularly happy when he watches an AEW match and the fans are going nuts and everyone's having a good time. I just get this image of this yeah, this old old man Jim Cornette seething with anger because the wrestling fans are enjoying the match and having a good time. And he's like, oh, you shouldn't be cheering this. This is not how wrestling should be. Jim, they're having a great time. There's a, there's a packed stadium full of people, you know. Merchandise stands are, are, are busy. The, 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 the catering is... Um, 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 like a tidal wave of, of, of popcorn and, and Coca-Cola um, and, and everyone's making money, everyone's having a good time and Jim Cornette's there, stuck in his house, uh, afraid of leaving because he might get the flu, uh, <laughs> wearing his mask, staying safe and just missing out on all the fun in life he, he, he could be having. Could you imagine Jim Cornette going to an AEW live event He's never going to go, is he? 
I, I know why he's not going to go because he, he he fears that he might actually have a good time. He, he would have a good time. He'd be one of the guys there wearing a mask, wouldn't he? If he if he sat there wearing his <laughs> wearing his mask, um, <laughs> afraid that people are going to to cough in his general direction. Oh my God, Jim! Did you see what they did? What did they do? They kept right on doing their chain wrestling. Hmm? They didn't, he didn't stop. He didn't fucking milk him. He didn't work with. He didn't let the people have their fucking thing. I, I watched the match and they, they 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 built it slow and there was a good tempo to it. It got faster, more exciting. It was great. They're they're enjoying doing the ole ole ole, which had nothing to do with the goddamn dry ass chain wrestling. It was so dry you had to watch it in the rain that was going on at the same time. Two different. It was, it was building up for the exciting near falls uh, to come. That's that's what what you do. It's like King's Road style, yeah things were happening and he, he can't fucking he can't listen to people because you don't listen to people in japan because it doesn't make any sense if you do that's why all these guys are fucking poison <sighs> but, all, all, all the guys who wrestled in japan who people really like to watch perform are poison no i i, I love watching the midnight express against the the rock and roll express and the road warriors that style um, that, that style was great, and I also appreciate the the, the, the Japanese King's Road style. Uh, I just like good wrestling. I'm not like tied to one particular time period or one particular style. Um, I, I can enjoy a uh, eclectic, diverse range of wrestling styles. Jim Jim Cornette can't. Um, for for a Democrat, Jim, you really should um, a, appreciate a bit more uh, diversity. In, in your life, he's, he's not like that. Is he? He's just completely uh, closed-minded, living in the past. Both these guys are athletic. They're in shape. They can move. <sighs> yes. They uh, do all the same things that everybody else on this roster do, but they usually execute them either quicker, sharper, or better. Is that a compliment? He's 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 steering hazardly, perilously close to complimenting them here. Let's see how we can bring it back to slag them off again. But, but th there, there yeah. is no breakout superstar here. Take has plenty. Of There's no breakout superstar here. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to the next few moments when we got a breakout superstar. Um, uh, he's going to uh, literally laugh in your face, bruv. <laughs> as he becomes uh, the, the the biggest star in in AEW, we we got a breakout star with Osprey. He's got a unique character. He's got a good look. He's excellent in the ring, and he's good on on the on the promos as well. <laughs> we got a breakout star. Sorry, Jim, but Will Osprey is a breakout star, whether you like it or not. The potential, as we've talked about. And he needs to be trained and guided and produced and brought along. He's not, like, going to fucking just instantly break out like he is right now. Neither is Ostrich. Wrong. Ostrich is breaking out as I speak. He's, he's going to be huge. Okay, the, the TV ratings aren't massive at the moment. But who's watching TV nowadays? Oh, Jim Cornette's watching TV. <laughs> Do you watch TV? Person watching this video? I don't watch TV. I've got an app. I watch the wrestling on, a, on an app. Like everybody else does today. <laughs> TV ratings. Why would I record anything on the TV? I haven't watched network TV for the last 10 years or so. I don't even know how the TV works nowadays. I don't even know what the channels are. I, I watch everything on through streaming platforms. This is how young people and old people like me watch TV today. But I'm I'm an old person. Yeah, I'm, I I am kind of old, not as ancient as Jim Connett. But just because I'm older than a lot of the other people watching wrestling, that doesn't mean that I'm living in the past. I'm, I'm not living in the past. I'm living right now. I'm not watching old Midnight Express match, matches. I'm not watching Smoky Mountain wrestling. I'm watching the new stuff and I'm really, really enjoying it because Will Osprey is an excellent wrestler and so is this Japanese fellow, even if I can't pronounce his name because I'm, because I'm English. And that's, 
Englanders aren't very good with foreign languages, sorry. Because he doing more of the same shit that everybody else on the show has already done for the past five years, just a little better. A, a lot better, a lot smoother, a lot faster, a lot, a lot more intensity, and the fans are going nuts for it all, Jim. This is not a Braun Breaker situation where, Who? by force of personality, a motherfucker's going to smash himself into the main events. Braun Breaker, he's a WWE guy, isn't he? Isn't he um, the son of Rick Steiner? He's good. I like Braun Breaker. I've seen him on um, NXT. He'd, uh, he'd, he'd have some good matches in AEW. Maybe, maybe Bron Breaker should go to AEW. But I, I think he's just he's just bringing up Bron Breaker because uh, Bron Breaker is a WWE guy. And WWE good, AEW bad. Right, Jim? They stood in the middle no, of the... Both, both, both organisations have good wrestlers. Yeah. Ring and traded chops and forearms. And then at one point, Take gave... Will a superplex and got a two count mm -hmm. and then grabbed a chin lock on him. Yeah. I'm glad he still kept working the same body part that is affected by the superplex off the top rope. <laughs> um. <laughs> ah, he's, he's not he's not working a, a body part, so it's not real wrestling. Um, I've seen lots of Japanese wrestling matches, you know, King's Road style where they work body parts, but... That's not what this match was about. It wasn't really time to work body parts, was it? Because they, that kind of match slows the pace down. And what he wanted here was a, a high-tempo, um, fast, exciting match which got the fans on their feet. And that's exactly what they delivered. And how did the fans react? The fans got to their feet and it, it worked. The, 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 the structure of the match, they weren't, rest, they weren't working body parts, was perfect for the, for the setting. It was perfect for the people in the arena, and it was perfect for me back home. We're introducing a new star. We're, we're, we're letting him show us what he's got, you know. It's not time to you know, um, go for the arm or the leg, you know. Do that later. You can have that kind of match later. No, we're introducing a new guy, um, a new star, and um, we're just going to let him show off for, for this match. And everyone's going to have fun at how awesome he is, how fast he is. How smooth he is, you know. This is what, what you do when you're getting a new guy over. Yeah, you can you can work the arm later on, Jim. You see what I'm saying? I just didn't do shit. And this partner, by the way, that Jim's got is such a yes man, isn't he? He agrees with just about everything that Jim says. Not everything, but but largely politically and wrestling. He, he's going, yeah, Jim, I agree. Yeah. Brian something, is it? Yes, man, Brian. Take a shit's the heel, but he's not cheating. And he doesn't have heat. And Ostrich is the baby face, but he's in the heel group. In it's, the... It's, not, it's not really a baby face yet. We're establishing the characters because he's a new guy. And uh, the Japanese wrestler is definitely uh, uh, acting more heelish, I would say, than Osprey in this match. Heel manager is on colour, putting them both over. Yeah, he's a really good job. And still can't explain why he wanted this to happen. Because he's a big head. He wants to show off his new shiny toys because he's a heel. That's what heels do. Heels brag. Heels show off. It's, it's a weakness that always ends up with their final destruction at the end of every James Bond movie. You know, like they uh, they show off to James Bond. This is, this, this is what a villain does. They, they capture James Bond and then they... They start bragging about how awesome their plans are, right? And that's what's happening here with this um, James Bond style manager. He's just bragging about how awesome he is by putting his two best wrestlers in the ring, not realizing that what he's doing is going to have um, negative um, uh, effects. Like, uh, yeah, James Bond is going to escape and um, for his plans. It's the same. It's uh, it's the ego also gets the, the the best of, of a villain, you know. Well, this is this is classic storytelling, right? And that's why I wrote I wrote this. As this plods along, I fail to see how this match is noticeably different. Plods along. Anybody who's seen this match would never describe it as plodding along. It was absolutely thrilling. It really was. It was so exciting. It was so energizing. It was it was excellent. It was an excellent match from beginning to end. It was not plodding along at all, Jim. From any other AEW match except these guys are in better shape. 
Then they did several big... Yeah, it was just like any other AEW match. That's why the fans were going absolutely wild for it. <laughs> That's why it was, it's been given five-star ratings all over the internet, you know. Yeah, it's just another match. Big moves in a row they didn't sell and popped right up from them. Then they got on their knees and traded forearms. Then they got on their feet and traded... It, it's, it's Japanese strong style. That, that's that's what they do. They they were uh, they were selling the moves, but it's the the strong style is about um, adrenaline. It's about the fighting spirit. This this is Japanese style wrestling. You know, this is this is how it works, Jim. It's uh, it's not it's not your old fashioned Smoky Mountain style wrestling. This is different. This is uh, like more Japanese influence. In forearms. Can they watch tape from the eighties to learn how to work? No, <laughs> they're not living in the 1980s, Jim. The 1980s are very different to 2024. If you did the same thing that you do in the 1980s in front of a modern wrestling audience, they'd be bored to tears. Maybe that's why he's not running a wrestling organisation anymore, because if he did, nobody would show up. It'd be a, a little bit dull for modern fans, a, a little bit too slow-paced, I would say. Uh, and that's coming from an old school guy who appreciates the old wrestling. You've got to move with the times, Jim. Jim Connett doesn't want to move with the times. He's uh, got his old political views that he had when he was 20. You know, same same political views at 20 at, that he's got at the age of 65. And his, uh, his wrestling views have, uh, have um, stayed the same as well. Nothing's developed with Jim Connett, has it? He's like frozen in amber. He's like the same person... Um, that he was in 86 in, in 2024. The world has moved on and left Jim Cornette behind and he's angry and frustrated and, and a bit and he doesn't understand. But, oh, wait a minute. And it doesn't have to, have to happen to us all. I'm older and I've moved with the times. Yeah. I, I used to watch my wrestling on television. Not anymore because I don't live in 1984. <laughs> There's more. Take acted like he was knocked out by a forearm and the referee was checking him. And that was so awesome. He's doing this with his hands. That was such a good visual. After Ostrich has knocked him out with the forearm and the referee's checking him, and Will goes over and doesn't cover him, he pulls him up by the hair and gives him taunting kicks in the corner. And he's the baby face. Then they do a brief... Yeah, he's, he's not a 1980s baby face. He's a modern baby face, Jim. <laughs> Remember Stone Cold Steve Austin was a, uh, a baby face, right? <laughs> the baby faces of today are very different to the baby faces back in the day, Jim. They're not smiling, blonde-haired, like uh, uh, surfer dudes, like Shane Douglas when he first started for WCW. The modern baby face is a little bit more complex than... Like I'm um, kissing the babies, and he's he's a he's got to be relatable to the modern crowd, you know. The modern baby face has, has got to relate to the modern audience, and that's why he's a little bit seems it seems a little bit more heelish than you would prefer, Jim, because yeah, society has changed. <laughs> society twenty twenty four very different to society nineteen eighty four. Brief gymnastics routine followed by false finishes. Then gymnastics routine. Oh my god! Tate gave uh, Ostrich some kind of suplex in the corner and almost broke his neck, dropped him straight down. That was brutal. Not just his neck, but uh, he even showed the mark at the media scrum afterwards. His back. Yes. Oh my god! Well, For a guy well, that has injury issues or you know wrestles this style, that's brutal. Well, the thing is, are those ropes will rip all the skin off of you. He dropped him straight down. And then uh, this is awesome. Chance the the chance the crowd was Jim Cornette somewhere in Louisville is is seething <laughs> because everyone's happy. At one point, Take hit a couple of really nice moves that looked Ooh, good. Nice what, moves, you know, fucking what they call them. But uh, See, I, Jim Cornette doesn't even know what the moves are called anymore. And remember, Jim Cornette spends hours each week watching wrestling. He watches just about everything that AEW does. And he doesn't even know the names of any of these moves. <laughs> Jim, dude, this is your full-time profession. Learn the bloody names of the moves, mate. My God. 
Ostrich popped right up without even registering it and leveled Take a Shit and covered it. Yeah, they, 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 they do that in, in, in King's Road. It really pops the crowd as it popped the crowd during Revolution. It's like, no, I refuse to stay down. Ah, adrenaline surging through my body. You know? Adrenaline, Jim. Ad adrenaline. <laughs> Demon and take a shit. It's a, it's a big part of this of this uh, match style. They're having these uh, surgeon uh, adrenaline boosts. Where you take this devastating move, which should you know you think end the match. And it's like no, I refused. I refused to to go down. I got a few, uh, like a, a a raging like a Red Bull moment uh, as it's you know forcing me to fight. I got that Japanese fighting spirit surging through my veins. My adrenaline is spiking. No, I'm going to kick out at one. The fans love that. I love that. Shit kicked out at one. There we go, kicking out one. There and this go. is all the shit that makes modern wrestling interchangeable and unwatchable because it's just this constantly. And yes, the aid. Does, does Jim Cornette watch these matches with the sound off? Can he not hear the fans going absolutely nuts? Can he not see them rising to their feet and, and, and applauding and loving every second of it? <laughs> okay, Jim. Jim Cornette would have uh, a point if the fans were sitting on their hands and not getting excited about this match. But that is not what happened in this match, right? Um, as they were plodding through their gymnastic routines, the fans were going absolutely mental and loving it. <laughs> in other words, what they were doing in the ring was resonating with the audience. So it was successful. It was really successful. If they're just grabbing a headlock and doing some um, 1984 styles um, stuff with a heel manager, the fans wouldn't have been going as crazy as they were. W fans, they just love that stuff. And that's why that it damages the business and it's constricting because we've all... Hang on, so... The fans loving this stuff damages the business. Seen all this so much that there's fewer and fewer people that will stick with it to see more of it. Okay. So I um, guess his thesis here is that um, if you if you show too much to the fans, they're going to get bored and, and not, not want to watch it anymore. The only reason, right, that I'm watching AEW now is because... I was at work listening to Jim Cornette, the Jim Cornette Experience. Is that the name of this podcast? And um, Jim Cornette was just talking about AEW all the time, right? And I, I didn't watch AEW at all. I just I just heard Jim Cornette slagging it off all the time. And I thought, I better, I better check this out. I better check this AEW out, right? And see if Jim is right. So that's what I did. I, I checked AEW out, got an app. Um, fight TV started watching it and started really really enjoying it and I've been doing that for the last couple of years now um, and I I don't listen to Jim Cornette at work anymore <laughs> I, I can't listen to him at work anymore I watched the odd clip here on on YouTube this is like an 11 minute video but I can't watch Jim Cornette talk for two or three hours it's just it's just too out of touch it's just it's just too out of touch so the idea then that that AEW what in what they're doing and giving fans too much isn't isn't growing the business is is wrong. I was a lapsed wrestling fan. I was watching a little bit of WWE every now and then, but that was it really. And it's because of AEW that I'm back watching more wrestling. So the the style of wrestling being produced by AEW today has um, brought me back into my pro wrestling hobby. So it's not restricting the business if it's doing that, is it? It's bringing back lapsed fans like me. Anyway, continue, Jim. And then, by the way, did you see? Ostrich hits the Styles Clash and Sockface awesome. called it that. Sir? Everyone knows. <sighs> What's he supposed to call Everyone knows it's a Styles Clash. Call it. Yeah, what is he supposed to call it, Jim? Good point, Brian. Good point, yes, man, Brian. Supposed to call it a water maneuver rather than remind everybody of a big star on another fucking show. Oh my god, Jim. Everyone knows it's a style clash. Everyone knows AJ Styles. It's not like there's anyone in the audience who hasn't heard of AJ Styles. 
<laughs> and then uh, Ostrich did the double arm deal and dropped Take right on his head. Mm -hmm. It looked like it broke his neck, but he didn't cover him. Even though he's laying there motionless, he pulled off his elbow pad. Hit him blade. Came from behind while Take was on his knees. And Ostrich slapped his leg with his left hand while swinging his right arm over the top of Take a Shit's head. And that, that is not what it looked like. <laughs> there was no way for Take a Shit to take a bump. He just had to collapse and he covered him one, two, three. So out of all... Okay, the, the way that Jim Cornette has just described that finish in, 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 in no way corresponds with how the finish actually looked. He's being overly critical here um, because he, he, he just wants to hate on the match. Let's be honest here. He just wants to hate on the match, even though it was an excellent match and the finish of the match didn't look fake at all. It, it looked really good. It looked very professional, very smooth, very fast, very crisp because that's what Osprey is all about. Everything he does looks very smooth, very crisp, very professional. None of it looks fake. It looks brutal. <laughs> All these goddamn big moves in this match, the shittiest looking thing is the finish. It was not a shitty looking finish. And then, as I mentioned, nothing happened. Don gets in the ring to check on Take a Shit. Here comes... N nothing happened. Well, the, 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 the fans all rose to their feet and gave you an unanimous round of applause and couldn't believe what they've just seen because it was a, an excellent five-star match. No, nothing happened. It's just a bad finish and nothing happened. Al Felcher, the other... <sighs> juvenile delinquent involved in this group he comes down to the ring and you think okay well here's gonna be oh my god now he's, he's he's just making up names for these wrestlers felcher it's fletcher isn't it be the deal now they're all it's gonna... just so immature for a guy his age isn't he with these silly names he comes up with people look at this is this what a, um, a mature gentleman should be doing with his time calling um this guy an ostrich and and what well, look at this it's just Juvenile, wasn't it? The turn on. This is like what twelve-year-old boy stuff. Ostrich, ostrich, and take a shit bowed to each other. Don left the ring, and the announcer said, "Well, Wednesday night on Dynamite on TV, it's going to be Will Ostrich versus Kyle Felcher." Fletcher, yeah, that was an excellent match as well. And Ostrich and Felcher then give each other a big hug yeah. and walk out together, holding hands up the ramp. Nah, uh, they're holding hands. What the fuck is this? It's it's uh, modern wrestling that people enjoy and that you don't get because you're completely out of touch. As out of touch with wrestling as you are with modern society and politics. Stop watching CNN and MSNBC, Jim, and go out your house every now and then. Have a chat with people. Well, there it is. Uh, that was a hell of a match. Now, I will say a lot of people are saying it was match of the year. Ah, there we go. Some some truth after that nine minute fourteen second nonsensical rant. What? Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. It can't be match of the year because I say it's not match of the year. Match of the year. How oh, about well, the year's early, isn't it? Yeah, probably. What in the Brian? Match of the even if you like the fucking twinkle toes style of wrestling that these people have adopted and millions of people do this wasn't even the best of that yes it was was this the best of something that you have seen this year no matter what that particular subject may be it wasn't yeah probably the, the best match that i've seen uh, since bullet club gold versus ftr that uh, 58 minute match i would say my match of the year, I didn't hate it, but I also kind of knew what to expect. They weren't going to all of a sudden work a different style. I didn't expect the... It was just a weird dynamic, too, like you said. The... Brian, just just be honest with Jim. Tell him, Jim, you're out of touch. People really enjoyed this match. And I, Brian, enjoyed the match as well. I think the only person watching this match who hated it was this guy here. Heel manager and commentary. But if you hated the match, person watching the video, let me know in the comments down below why this was a terrible match. Let me know why this wasn't excellent. If you if you didn't enjoy this match, you shouldn't really be watching wrestling. Get another hobby because this was as good as it gets in 2024. Putting both of these guys over, but 
Well, that's what they, they told no story. There is no story to tell. There is no, uh, no story. There, there is a story. You have the beginning of the story. This is the first chapter. Who's telling this? Thing is, there's no. That's not AEW strong suit storytelling. It's more about in ring, do what you can, balls to the wall. That's true. That's true. I'll give you that. But so, there's going to be a story here. They're, they're turning him into a big baby face. So people are calling this a potential match of the year. There are people yes. who are raving about this match, saying match wow. of the year. I'm raving about the match. It was excellent. Really, really enjoyable. One of the great matches. And that's what wrestling's supposed to be, isn't it? It's supposed to be enjoyable. Matches. They, there are people calling this the greatest pay-per-view of all time, apparently. <laughs> It was a fantastic pay-per-view, yeah. You've got two five-star matches and an excellent main event with Sting being um, sent into retirement on a positive note. Excellent. Really, really enjoyable pay-per-view. I think it was a little bit too long, uh, four hours, but I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> Again, not what I think, but I've seen people doing it. And it's uh, stunning. Yeah, okay, well, really enjoyable pay-per-view. You know what? If I'd only been born 40 years later, I could have gotten into wrestling business. Instead of being a manager, I could have been the goddamn biggest wrestling star in the world because it's so easy now, and they don't... Jim Cornette thinks he could be the biggest wrestling star in the world if he's born 40 years later. Yeah, Jim Cornette got just as much athletic ability and charisma as Will Ospreay. Now you'd just be a heel commentator or um, heel manager again, Jim. Hill podcaster. Care whether you fucking look like anything or not, and you can. Goddamn, I. These two guys were in great shape. When I got into business, I was almost 200 pounds. I'd be Andre the Giant now. The fuck? It's this easy? Both of the guys in this wrestling match were six footers. Uh, both, um, I think, uh, Osprey, probably around 200 pounds, maybe a little bit heavier. And the, the Japanese chap must be like 230 pounds. So what are you talking about? This, this wasn't a, a, a Derby Allen versus Young Bucks match. You know, you can criticise their physiques maybe as being a little bit small, but not this match, Jim. So that's, that's Jim Conner criticising um, <laughs> uh, match of the year candidate. Let's see if I can pronounce this name correctly as I conclude the video. Yeah, Will Ospreay versus Kenoseki. Take a sh no, I can't do it. <laughs> anyway, so Jim Cornette, uh, is he as out of touch as I think he is, or is he just working as all? Is he just doing what he was doing back in the day, playing a playing a heel, but rather than a, a heel manager that he played back in the day, now he's just a heel podcaster? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for checking out the video. And if you want me to do more videos like this, I, I go through what Jim Cornette is saying about AEW or WWE, uh, either agreeing or disagreeing with his takes, then uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up. You know, but, uh, I, I kind of enjoyed myself doing this video. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your wrestling, your AEW and your WWE. Try not to be as close-minded as Jim Cornette uh, with your politics and your wrestling. And I'll catch you all later. Bye.